Hey guys, how's it going? It's the season to get tractors and mowers and snow blowers from the free piles on the side of the road being springtime. Normally I have a winch, as you can see it's spooned out there and went to go hook my jumper pack up to reel it back in and it does not do what it's supposed to. I'll show you what it does right now. All right, so now that we got inside, we can kind of look at it a little bit better and talk about it. It's a worn 3,000 pound winch they're on the better end of what's out there. I've had a bunch of Harbor Freight ones in there and essentially they kind of crap out over time too. Again, this does not have a controller anymore. It's kind of remote to go use it. What I've been doing is just taking a jumper pack and hooking one into one side and one to the other and it would wind in or wind out depending on which side you have the positive and the negative and I just winch tractors up into the bed of the truck. Well, obviously, that's not doing it what's supposed to be doing. So I figured we turn the camera on and we'll just kind of do some exploration on what happened to it. I don't know if it's fixable or not. It's getting ahead of it, but let's go out, tear into it and see what we can find, what the fault was. This is going to be the armature or the electric motor part of it. And I believe this is going to be where the gearbox is tucked inside. So I, my guess is we're probably going to start from this end. Let's see if we can get this end cap off of here with the brushes and uh, give us an eyeball into what's happening inside and then from there it looks like possibly we could split it right here middle bracket you see it sitting on there is just so it, it goes over the rear rail of the truck and is slideable okay man and removable you can take the uh you, know, you can see the corrosion that was getting in it I wonder if those two screws will allow the whole motor to come off. Yeah, it's got water right there. I would think it would have O-rings. It's meant to be outside. This is for like a four-wheeler. And my four-wheeler has definitely gone through a bunch of water. Yeah, it's got water in it. Let's see if it'll break from there. Look at it. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that came off really easy, huh? Let's um, let's try putting power to this and see if it's in here or if it's in the gearbox. My bet it's this. Let's see what happens. Just touch it. Well, there's your answer. I do know that this would probably be supported by a bearing out in front, but it seems like the corrosion. If you can see that, it's right up on it. Well, maybe we can clean that up. I'm not sure if we could push the whole assembly out this way. Let's try to rig up something to support this. Yeah, I'm surprised there's no O-ring around the seal. That's what caused it, huh? Let's give her a couple of taps of persuasion and see if it'll want to move at all. <laughs> the magnets are pulling on right now. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they should do that. Now, this should have a bearing that it spins on. Yeah. That's not good. Let's see if we can get that out of there. The brushes are going to try to hold it also. Let's go take a peek in here. Let's see what that looks like. Sometimes, too, they... On electric motors that are the uh, rust gets behind the magnet and it kind of cracks the glue away from it and they'll come in and interfere also oh, yeah, look at all that that got in there all right this is a little leather pads let's go try gingerly crank it down on that and see if we can get the back Moved. There you go. Oof. <laughs> a tad tight. And what's good though, the brushes, a lot of times the brushes go in on an angle. You got to try to pull them back, put pins in them, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Let's um, find if we can get like, maybe a little brass wire wheel. We'll try cleaning this armature up right here. 
it probably should look something like that on the other end. What do we got going on here that we can deal with? Hmm. Probably run a wire reel around the seal. Probably we can seal it up with some kind of um, right stuff or something. And these should float. They do. Good. All right. Let's start cleaning some stuff and we'll come back and see how we make out. So far, so good. I'll try to get the big stuff off. It looks like it's got some cavities going on in there. It's not like it ever went underwater or anything. It sat on the back of the bed of the truck. And like I said, although rain would go on it, snow would go on it, it wouldn't, um, it wasn't like it got submerged and water got in it. I think I took one of the Harbor Freight ones apart a long time ago. And that actually had O-rings on the body, like a big O-ring going around. And I think the O-ring had failed, just the quality of the rubber was real crappy. And when I took it apart, um, I think the magnets on that one were what the damage was. It, the uh, magnets, like I talked about, the, the rust got behind them, that white corrosion on the aluminum housing caused the magnets to kind of like crush inward and, and bind up on it. Doesn't seem to be the case on this one. Let's go get, um, let me see if I have a brass wire wheel to clean that. I just don't want to beat it up too much. How about like a Scotch Brite pad? Oh, tool. I'm going to go clean the surface up with that. And then we still have to deal with the bore inside of this. I mean, we could do the same for that. Let's give her a shot. Kind of drag we get on and we put it back on. At least it turns, but I don't think we should use any lube on that. I think those are like silicone bronze bushings that have like an oil in them. I'm quite sure we're best. Let's go dig out some of the crud that's in here though, huh? I wonder if I can get in there like a little tiny bottle brush or something. Clean those surfaces up. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of like that same oxidation that was on, on the shaft there. Yeah, so we got in the old Dremel kit. That one looks pretty good, huh? The metal. Yeah, we'll try to give him that one a shot. Get all the bristles in there. Yeah, one on the outside fighting us. See what we get. <laughs> that, was that was the end of that, huh? There's one too many rip -ums. Hopefully it did the job. Let's go uh, get the motor. That's more like it. What's your thoughts on putting oil in there? Not quite sure. Maybe like a, a light oil. May help just kind of even just keep the corrosion down. I know if any kind of, like you can't use like a motor oil. It'll just cake up over time. Cause it to bind. Get all these moving free. I'm going to take a little time. I'm going to take a wire wheel. I'm going to go clean up this surface. And again, we still have to deal with all of this. So... I'm going to get something a little bit more aggressive and we'll wash all this out and see what we can kind of come up with for um, this lip that's on here. Actually, we talked about using this, didn't we? Let's go see how that works for us.
that sucker right down to the rubber. The joke there. New one. <laughs> All right, what side was what? I think the, yeah, what side's much more deeper? I don't know if we want to do anything about that or not. Let's go see how we fit. I'm gonna blow it out with an air gun first. The magnet's got a bunch of crap stuck to it. Let's get rid of that, that kind of stuff. Casualty on the floor. One of the brushes broke a chunk off the front of it. I think we're still gonna put it together without it maybe. Let's bring out a heavier gun, see if we can get rid of some of the heavy, scaly rust on this side. Alright, let's see if we, uh, clear for interference. Magnet's gonna grab it, though. There we go. Just gonna... <laughs> Just gonna support it. The bearings are what hold it off, but at least we got... We got wiggle room now. We didn't have that before, so. All right. Let's go, um. I think I wanna maybe pack some grease around these edges to try to help seal these two surfaces up so they're not doing what they're doing. At least give it a fighting chance, right? Maybe like a real thick, heavy grease. Yeah, so this is like machine oil, like what you would use on a, um, like sewing machine or something. Let's go give her a couple little Mostly probably just to keep it any moisture gets on you know, stop rust. I don't want to get it too much on the contact, so let's see, we'll give her a little bit down in there. And then we get some good old heavy grease from the 40s. <laughs> and we'll try to make a, a moisture barrier around that top edge. Probably should be better off on this maybe. We'll give us some place to put it, right? Just gonna build that up all the way around. This can only go in one way. It's got a notch that it lines up with. And one thing that's gonna fight me is that brush that's hanging out of it. All right. Even that out. It's like I'm doing one of those painting shows. Happy little trees. All right. Get a rag. So somewhere is a notch. I think that right there. That tab lines up with that tab. Yeah. So let's um. You think we should stick the two bolts in it? Kind of have it like line us up? Let's try that. Oh, they're square. I'm gonna go clean these up on a wire wheel real quick first though. You think that's when I was made? 930 of 77? Definitely got some age to it, so. I'll take away some of the things I said. <laughs> All right, let's go see if we can get that on there. The one brush is gonna fight me. It did. Awesome. I wonder if I could try to pinch that together. And maybe the weight, if I stick it in the vise with that, maybe the weight will just kind of hold it downward. Let's go kick it a little bit on an angle so I can turn the bolts. We need to do anything to the. Oh, I still want to pack this one with grease like you did the other side. Where's the motor? Gearbox, rather. Maybe we'll leave well enough alone. 
That should all be packed with grease inside there. Just be a uh, set of um, planetary gears on the outside with a gear on the middle of it. Gives it a gear reduction. Yeah, see if we can get all that pressed back on there. I'm probably going to put this in the vise, I think. And I think a little lube before insertion will help on the big end. Maybe a little near too. Why not? I'm gonna go give that a couple, a couple of lumps. This side doesn't have any electrical connection, so I'm not worried about being overzealous. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. Back you up and see if you can shove it in the hole. Now, does this end index at all? I got a, there is a tit on it. It's got to go either like that. I think that's the way it was. See, if not, the label will be facing down. You wouldn't be able to see it. And I see it's keyed on the end. I don't know what we got to do to turn that. Back the bolts off. See if you can get it to. There we go. Things gonna work. I'm gonna give us more than 50. I'll give us 60 <laughs> percent. Yeah, that smoke's gonna come out, right? So. buzz them in. Problem is I can't really tell if it's binding or not, you know, I can't really. All right. Drum roll, please. Let's get some power. It could be bound up on it, so we're gonna find out. Screws felt like it kind of squished it together, you know, instead of having a little bit of free play. Ready? Ah, you suck. Got overzealous. Let's um back the bolts off. The, the gearbox could be locked up too. But let's back the bolts off. Give a little bit of play. Uh, I wonder if we were kind of like locked up on the um, that key where it gets keyed together. That. Nope. You suck. <laughs> Let's um unbolt it. I mean, we probably should have tried turning the input <laughs> before, but that was my jumping ahead. Let's get that off there. Thought it was going to work, didn't you? I'm going to try. I wonder if that, um, that brush got in there good too. Oh, best way to tell. Can we get a, that wrench fit that? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Doesn't sound great. And on that note. Well, I don't think that size the issue because I literally can take it and. That side does spin. All right, so let's go put it back on there one more time. I went and kind of spun the motor in its housing with the wrench. And the other thing is too, I just wonder if we had it kind of like bound up, like I was saying. So we need to be, I wonder if I was 180 out on that. I don't remember if the 
label was facing up or down, do you? I'm trying to find a little, there's a little tit right there, the little indexing tit. If I had that in the wrong spot, that would make it so it was racked. So we had it like that. Let's go try it the other way. <laughs> See what happens. There it goes. That feels like it actually has a bit better seating to it. There we go. Be nice if that was what it was. Sorry. Back up a little. You're too close. Set back up. Thank you. Um, just leave them hand tight. Yeah, we'll give a little wiggle room. See if that did it. Ready? There we go. That was it. Let's tighten it up. See if it works. What I should have done is probably taken a marker when I took it apart and put some index marks where how it came apart. What do you think? <laughs> Still gonna turn? All right. That's one way. Switch gears to reverse. Yeehaw. That was bad for about 15, 20 minutes worth of work. Let's um, get it cleaned up a little bit and wind that cable on. One thing I do when using the winch is I, I try to not have a really large spool on it. You get more power at it. Like say it says it's the 3,000 pound winch. It's a 3,000 pound winch, but I think it's at the very lowest level on the windings. So if you have a really high spool of cable on it, it's probably like a 1,500 pound pull capacity just because the gear ratio, the, the further you come out from the center, the lower your... I should say the taller your gear ratio is, if you can understand that. Like, um, let's explain it like how much cable you're putting in. So the, the, the winch has a certain RPM it runs at. Say it's running at 60 RPMs. It spins 60 times around for every minute. Well, if you're spinning wire up here on the inside, that 60 revolutions, say poles, will make up a number, 12 feet. You're out here it's pulling 30 feet of cable because it's, you know, it's, it's that much further wrapped around it. There's much more cable the further you get out. So you lose the power that you had. It's, you, you don't get nothing for free. So that's where the, you know, the gain and the loss is, is right there. So this, the more cable you can have closer to the center of the drum, the more power it has. Uh, the further out on the drum that it's pulled up, the more cable uh, speed you would have. So I, I try to run them like this. You know, of course, this is all the way in. But um, I'm pretty much, when I'm pulling something up, I'm starting with uh, just probably about two levels of wrap on it. All right, enough yapping. Let's go shove it back on the truck. All right, back on the truck. Time for a load test. Let's see how she does. Out right of there. And we got ourselves a tractor hooked up to it. Like it's doing fine. When the back wheels hit is when it, the load goes on it. Perfect. It spools up on one side. I don't have it in the middle right now. And usually I hop up in the middle of the truck. But. That's it. Good to go all over again. Tis the season for dragging busted up my horse in the back of the truck. All right, guys, with that, thank y'all for hanging out. A little uh, side video kind of thing. 
there's a failure that I had that need to get taken care of, so I figured I'd turn the camera on. With that, uh, maybe we'll go play with this in the near future. Till then, I'll see you. Take care.